Oh, these tarantulas, as promised, are being moved into a bigger plastic tubs. So if you watched the last feeding video, you should already be familiar with which tarantulas are we going to rehouse. And those are two of Davus pentaloris, a female and unsexed one. The Xenesty species Megascopula, Pseudohapalopus species blue. And one bonus one that wasn't featured in, in feeding video, but I want to have something like a big finish at the end of the video. And the last tarantula that we are going to be rehousing is Hilbrahi species electric blue. And that is an Asian one, fast one. Uh, I haven't seen her like being completely outside in a while now so I'm looking forward to actually see her outside and also one, one unfortunate thing is I'm like 95% sure that it is a male so in the future we won't be able to make an epic enclosure for this cool tarantula species but we will be enjoying as that male will grow up and maybe in the future once he is mature maybe I will in the meantime get my hands on a female a mature female and then we can have like you know, stuff. Also, one thing you maybe noticed that I started this video recording through this older camera. Now, the reason for that is I have some issues with the GH5, the Panasonic GH5. And at first I thought that something is wrong with the actual body, but it seems that it is actually a lens that is doing something weird. For some time now, I had a feeling that the, the recordings from this camera aren't as sharp as they used to be and I wasn't I wasn't really certain if it was just something in my head because not so recently but I got the 4k uh, display and maybe that was why it seemed that way but I've been testing it for uh, last few days I also had a friend over that also got the GH5 and we compared the the still photos and for sure the ones that are coming out of this camera I mean with this lens uh, seems uh, way less sharper than from his uh, camera so I still need to do a bit more testing but it seems that I will be forced to order a new lens of this type which sucks since they are ridiculously expensive regardless until I sort that I will be using this old and trusty uh, handheld camera and also there is one more thing that I need to address before we start with this video now you see this is the the enclosure that I made for the vampire crabs. There are actually two issues. First issue is that I can't really manage to find, I mean, I cannot find the seller that is keeping the vampire crabs and that is actually able to ship them. So if you maybe know someone that is that got them in stock and is able to ship them in Croatia, uh, write it in the comments and I will be checking them out. So I should see that, but uh, before I can actually order them, there is one problem that now came out with this enclosure. As you see, everything seems all right. This this plant is growing like crazy. Also, the other one is here growing superb. Also, this one is sprouting new parts. Well, this one not really, but I think it seems that it will start. This one is doing superbly. This one a bit less. The one plant that I had in water died, unfortunately but this seems to be acclimating to the enclosure and now seems to be growing rather well. But where is the issue? Now you know that this is a waterfall, at least it should be a waterfall, but you see problem is here. The water is barely dripping. The waterfall is barely working and I'm not sure if you can hear the hum, but the pump is making working noise, but it doesn't really work. It is barely moving any water. So what I will need to do, I will need to uh, drain most of the water out, even though you see a lot of evaporated, I wasn't really uh, paying attention to this enclosure. I, I must admit that. I will need to drain the water, take the enclosure out, and then access the pump over there and see what is happening and perhaps uh, replace that pump with some better pump. I have a couple of pumps, but I don't know if they are better than this or not. So once I fix that, I'm able to order the, the crabs and add them to this enclosure because other than this pump not working, I think that the enclosure is ready. So once again, if you know some seller that got vampire crabs and is able to ship them in Croatia, let me know. But also if some, it doesn't need to be some seller, if someone is breeding them on their own, let me know because we need to get the crabs for the dark den 
I know that all of you are really impatient in regards to that. Also, I am impatient because I want to see that enclosure uh, being alive, alive with animals. Now, let's start the rehouse. First one will be Davos, Pentalor Davos Pentaloris female. And let me make a quick enclosure for her. I will be using these plastic tubs, these trusty, trusty plastic tubs that I love to use. Um, I will fill in the substrate. You see, I have four heights for four tarantulas and uh, Hilobrahe species Vietnam blue, uh, not Vietnam blue, electric blue. She will only get a lot of substrate on the side because you know they like to dig around and make their tunnels. Yeah, substrate. Substrate will be mostly cocoa fiber, but also there are some um, orchid bark chips and some coconut chips. Yeah, just for some additional stuff. This one will be for the females, so she will get the prettiest cork bark, you see. Not that we have anything against the males, but females get a bit better, usually. <laughs> so now let's add her and if you haven't had opportunity in the feeding video, uh, check her nice abdomen now up close. Uh, really pretty, really pretty. Um, I need a poking stick so that we can basically poke her out like this. Pokey pokey. Oh, whoa, she's <laughs> not amused by my poking. You see, boom, boom, boom. Is that like a thread? <laughs> not real thread posture, but hey, 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 no, 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 no. Don't go out, don't go out. Hey, oh, huh. oh, she's being fast. Let's see if we can point her in the right direction. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, do I really need a catch cup? Come on. You are better than that. Okay. Now to make this a bit safer, I'm going to take the catch cup regardless. And just... Oh. <laughs> and now the situation is a bit more under control. Okay. <laughs> Now there you go. See? There's a new hide. <laughs> what do you say about that, huh? You can go and enjoy that. But no running outside, please. It seems that she calmed down now. I hope you're going to enjoy this because you received the previous cork bark. So appreciate that fact. And can I put the label on it? If I manage to not break it, great. I managed to do that. <laughs> there we go. She got her old label. That was Pentaloris, female. Yeah. Now to handle the other that was Pentaloris. But that one is, as I said, is unsexed. Where should I put this? Also, we need some sub and a bit less pretty cork bark. Uh, how big is the, the pseudo hapalo? Mm, I'm not really sure which one should I use for who. This one should definitely be for Xenestis because Xenestis is the biggest, at least the leggiest. So maybe this, yeah, I'll use this. Tarantulas can always dig under it and make it a bit more spacious than the actual cork bark is. They always have that option. Let's get it. Hopefully he is a bit less bolty. One poke will tell us. Oh, don't you throw hairs at us. This is a hair kicking blocker, you see. Oh, 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 let's go. Oh, just move forward, yes. There's your space. Mm, mm, mm. Just got upgraded to a bigger apartment. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely a bit calmer than a female. So that made this rehouse a bit easier. Yeah, excellent. Uh, now let me take your label. Ah, crap. I accidentally destroyed it. Damn, I will need to write the number so I don't mix it up. Although uh, they are rather unique looking, so it is hard to mix them with some other tarantula. But just in case, the number is 226. As you know, every tarantula in the dark den got its own uh, unique number. So therefore, I always know uh, which tarantula is in which enclosure. And I always write it underneath, even though I have the label, because sometimes uh, the label can get destroyed when you are, I don't know, misting or something. So sometimes it can destroy the number, but if it's written under the enclosure with the, the permanent marker, then uh, I cannot mix them up. Yeah, so uh, Xenestis species, that will be fun. That should definitely be fun. Substrate and we go, go. As I said, he will get the biggest cork bark. Or should I say the widest? You see, it is definitely the widest one. And what is your mood, little buddy? They usually have those weird movements, you know? Although I think as soon as I poke this one, the feeding response will probably kick in because they love to eat, let's see. Oh, no. Well, it seems like I was wrong. <laughs> Pretty chill response, to be honest. Come on, let it go. 
don't live in the past live in the future in brand new enclosure more spacious enclosure Woo! with bigger cork bark you see i mean you didn't even have a cork bark in your previous enclosure and if we look a bit closer it seems that on carapace there is some kind of purplish or pinkish color right yeah it seems like that definitely sweet looking now uh, enjoy your enclosure there is nothing more to say actually you see how edges of the pedipops are a bit different than edges of the the legs it is like pedipops got some sort of white contour to it or something like that hmm interesting 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 mm, but let's let's continue this is going to be the last easy uh, rehouse because this is pseudohapolopus species blue i i handled it multiple times and it is really chill tarantula 215 and i didn't route the number for 211 some substrate and we can go go and also the hide of course cork bark hide must not forget about that really important well kind of important because a lot of tarantulas don't even use it but we are going to see what this pretty one will do with it that booty is just so magnificent let me zoom in on that how far can we go Whoop. Mm, mm, mm. so blue and shiny the color depends on the angle so much <laughs> oh well time for the move yeah there we go so easy so easy told you so far this one was super chill and i managed to uh handle it on a couple of occasions but look at that so blue and shiny i'm loving it mm. but this rehouse leads us into a less rehouse on this video and this is another blue one because as i said hilobrahi species electric blue and they definitely depending on the angle got like some of the prettiest legs in the tarantula hobby mm. shout out to spiders world that gave me this tarantula as tiny tiny sling a long time ago i was super hyped when i when i got it because as you know that was one of the the species that i was i was drooling about it the most because that was newly discovered species back in the day when i i entered the hobby i mean i was in the hobby for like a year maybe when this one uh started popping up in the tarantula trade and it was like oh i want that i want that one and yeah now i have it for a long time even though it is not that big but we are going to see how exactly big in a second it is down there and, and the safest way of doing that should be i need one another bucket we are doing this the old-fashioned way the best way is when you are rehousing fast tarantulas and you want to get them out the best way is to do it on the floor where on the on the big and open space because then even if tarantula bolts out you will still have enough time to react and cap it with a catch cup because even though they are fast they aren't that fast once they start running usually what is what is the fastest thing is the the reaction because they just bolt and run somewhere and while you it takes a while for us humans to react definitely now let's get it out mm, tweezers and a catch cup nearby Mm. Here it is, preparing to bolt. So if I put it, mm. oh, 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 chillaxing, chillaxing. Oh, the blue coloration. Okay, stop right there, you criminal scum. <laughs> it is from a video game. Now from this angle, it doesn't look superb, but if we get it to raise its legs, then you will, you should see it. But I don't know if I can get it to raise its legs. At least not safely. Whoa, whoa, oh! Have you seen that for a brief second? Let me grab a light. Oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't want to cover you with the substrate. That is my mistake. How can I place the light? Okay, let's try it now. Mm -hmm. You see that blue coloration? That is what I was talking about. Too bad that we cannot get a thread posture, a real thread posture from this guy, but yeah, you can see it now, definitely. You see why it is called the electric blue. Mm, mm, mm. I think that we were bothering him enough. Uh, now it's time to move him into a new enclosure. But I don't know what will be the easiest way. Maybe if I just take his enclosure and do something like... Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The falling substrate. Thank God I didn't put any rocks inside it, just soft and not so heavy substrate. So, he's inside, I can just close it off and call it a day. Uh, a package before we end this video, I'm going to open the package. Let me just clean all of better, right? <laughs> what? What the hell? I think that they were supposed to be standing like this, but instead they were standing like this in the mail. Okay, okay, there is some uh, note, so let me check what exactly this is. It smells like mm, chocolate, caramel, something like that. At first I thought that these are like jelly stuff that you can feed to our beetles and roaches and such, but it seems like these are for human consumption. Oh, milk chocolate, mm. let me see. What is this? The explanation. A T-Rex stamp for a friend of mine that is collecting stamps. Sweet. Thank you. So, this is from Brianna from Milwaukee. And her mom made, as she claims, the best salted ca caramel. So these are homemade and in time like this, you know, the COVID and stuff, uh, it is kind of sketchy to try out stuff that is homemade, but since these were standing in the mail for like a month, I checked the date when this was shipped, and it was shipped almost a month ago, if there was any corona on this, it is long, long, long gone. So I think that I can definitely try it out to check if your claims are right. Although I never tried salted caramel, at least I think I never did, so I don't think that I have a reference. Mm, they taste just like candy. The caramel candy, of course. And also, she's sending me a, a Moonstruck chocolate and she's claiming that this should be like the best chocolate ever. I will try it with Maya, my wife, and we will we will see if your claims are through. But these, these are nice, these are sweet. So, thank you for sending me this. And the rest of you, thank you for watching the... No, no, I messed it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs it up and comment something. If you want to support this channel even more, there's a Patreon page. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. I upload every Monday and Friday. So see you again soon. Bye! -bye.